So we have finally reached it. We have now reached the season finale for NASCAR this season at Phoenix. The duel in the Arizona desert. So we have three championships on the line this year weekend. And yes, even though the ARCA title champion will be crowned in ARCA West this year, it's pretty much set that Jake Drew's winning that title. Because all Jake Drew has to do is start the car and he's the champion in uh, Phoenix. Hey, sometimes that happens. Like, not every fucking season under season-long points format is going to be like F1 from 2021 last year. Like, when it's your year, it's your year. But anyway, we have three championships up for grabs, so let's take a look at all three. So yeah, anyway, show me the final four for the truck series this year. So our final four in trucks is Zane Smith, Ty Majeski, Chandler Smith, and the reigning champion Ben Rhodes. So the reigning champion Ben Rhodes will have a chance to win his set, will go back to back. And honestly, look at Rhodes, it's kind of surprising he may, mainly even got here. Like, he is, his consistency is nowhere near the level it was a year ago. And one of the main reasons he made it in here was because of Thor Sport manipulating the outcome of the chase for that homestead. When, they, when Matt Crafton was told not to pass Rhodes and then... And then uh, Christian Eckes was then told to let Ben Rhodes by to gain points and screw Stuart Friesen over, which was a two-point swing. The fact that Thor Sport didn't get a fucking penalty for that, and but SHR gets a penalty for it, is kind of asinine. And it just shows more NASCAR's inconsistency and bullshit there. But Ben Rhodes, he does have experience in this situation because he did win the championship last year. Granted, he won that title without winning the race as he finished third in the finale. But this year, it will probably have to take a win for Rhodes to win if best to go back to back. <clears throat> now, Ty Majeski, he enters in as the hottest driver in the Truck Series chase as he has won three, two of the last three races in the round of eight to make it here. Getting his first career win at Bristol and then following it up a couple weeks later with a win at Homestead. And you kind of want to have momentum entering this season, entering this winner take all race. And Majeski's got that momentum. And think about this where his career was when he was at Rock Bottom getting cut by Roush Fenway and looked like complete ass. And now a couple years later, he has bounced back. Hey, some drivers just take longer to develop than others. And then you got the two Smiths. Like, Saint Smith, he's been in the Final Four the last two years. Last those two years, he has always fallen one spot short. He has always ended up second. Always falling one spot short. 2020, he fell one spot short to Sheldon Creed. Last year, he fell one spot short to Ben Rhodes. His third time to charm for Saint Smith. And he's now with the uh, Front Row Motorsports. So regardless of what happens, this is a successful season for Front Row Road Motorsports. But I feel like Saint Smith, he's been the best driver all year. I feel like him not winning the title at Phoenix would be fucking criminal. But Saint Smith has been very consistent. He just hasn't won yet. But maybe now when it matters the most, Saint Smith can finally show up. Like, he's been close a couple years. It's this the year that he finally gets over that hump in the truck series. And, of course, Chandler Smith, he looks to end, he looks to wrap up KBM's tenure in Toyota with a championship. But, of course, Saints, Chandler Smith having a career year, really establishing himself as a mainstay, as a name to watch out for in the pipeline. Especially when he goes to Colleague next year to drive the 16 for Colleague and Xfinity. And of course, Chandler Smith has such experience at Phoenix. He won this race a year ago when he wasn't part of the championship four. So now, can Chandler Smith now do it again, this time with a championship on the line? A lot of good stories to hear. Rhodes looking to go back to back. Ty Majeski looking to cap off a a career resurgence year and get hot at the right time. Zane Smith looking to finally get over the hump on the third attempt. And Chandler Smith looking to wrap up KBM's tenure in Toyota before KBM switches to Chevrolet. A lot of great storylines, but in the end, only one can walk out champion. Who will it be? 
So there are a lot of great storylines to look here entering this Truck Series ch Championship 4. I think either of these four you can make a solid argument for. But I think for Ben Rhodes, like, I haven't seen the speed out of Ben Rhodes all year. I don't see back-to-back -back happening. Like, the only time we've seen back-to-back -back championships happen under this format was Tyler Reddick and Xfinity in 2018 and 2019. Like, I just haven't seen the speed out of Ben Rhodes, and it's pro it's not going to take a third-place finish like it did a year ago. Rhodes is probably going to have to win the race. Which I don't see that happening. I um Chandler Smith, I don't know if he can do it this year. Like it's I mean it's very hard to win at a track two years in a row. And in time, and so I think it's between Majeski and Saint Smith, but I want to rule out Chandler Smith, but it's gonna be hard to win at a track. It's always hard to win at a track two years in a row. But in the end, we've all seen that momentum really don't mean shit in the final race when it winner take all. But in the end, though, I'm going with the guy that's fallen short by one position the last two years. And I think this time, on the third attempt, I think the third time will be the charm. And I think he does get over that hump. So with all that said, I'm going to go on a limb. And I'm going to say that Zane Smith will finally get that Truck Series championship that has eluded him the last two years. And I think Zane Smith will walk out of Phoenix as your 2022 Truck Series champion. And he also gives Front Row Motorsports their first championship in a NASCAR sanctioned series of any kind. And I think if St. Smith can win the title, I think this year for St. Smith, he proved that Front Row Motorsports can be a good team if they get the right pieces in place. But yeah, now, with the Truck Series now out of here, show me the Final Four for the Xfinity Series. Are you fucking kidding me? Ty Gibbs versus Junior Motorsports? All the parody we've had this season in all three series, and we get this shit as the final four? Even after even after Gibbs antics this this last week? Fuck right off. Like it's Gibbs versus everybody, which is kinda fucking accurate because it literally is Gibbs versus everybody because the fan base hates him. Every driver in a garage hates him, and it's even gotten to the point where Junior GGR fans want nothing to do with Ty Gibbs, especially the Kyle Busch fans. Like, it is just completely crazy what's going with how much Gibbs has managed to turn half the fan base turn on him so quickly. But it's mainly Gibbs' his own fault for wrecking his own teammate at Martinsville. Like, I think that there just signed his own death warrant. But, but look at the Final Four here, like, of course Noah Gregson trying to win that first championship. Like, out of these four, regardless of who wins, someone's guaranteed to win their first Xfinity title. Of course Noah Gregson has experience at Phoenix. He won this race back in the spring. But it's very hard to sweep both races at a track. And of course Justin Allgaier, he's been close to the championship on a couple occasions, but has always fallen short. And of course, Algar does have experience winning at Phoenix in the chase because he won this race in 2019 to make the Final Four. So can Algar finally do it now that Phoenix is the championship race or will some more bad luck find a way to strike Algar? And then Josh Berry, well, I mean, Josh Berry's had a very has had a career year and a career resurgence as he's made the most of his opportunity at Junior Motorsports. And now, Berry has a chance at the championship. And of course, Ty Gibbs, we all know everything about him. Like Ty Gibbs, the wheel, the talent is there, and he's a jet. He's the, no one's denying his talent. The talent is there, but his antics and his maturity is the one thing that's holding him back from being a good driver to being a great driver. But it would be, but it would complete, complete kick. Yeah, it would be complete chaos if Ty Gibbs would end up walking out champion. Like, if Ty Gibbs walks out champion, God help us all. But Ty Gibbs is going to have a very uphill battle, especially after Martinsville when he wrecked his own teammate to be in the Final Four and screwed Joe Gibbs racing out of a 50-50 shot at the championship. Like I mentioned back in the Martinsville recap, 
That whole Lawrenceville thing shows that Ty Gibbs is not a team player. And that he doesn't care about Joe Gibbs racing. He only cares about himself. But yet his grandpa will find every single way to make excuses for him. Yeah, Joe Gibbs, you can say all you want that you're going to discipline Ty Gibbs and teach him a lesson this week before Phoenix. It isn't going to stop what's inevitable at Phoenix with Brandon Jones because Brandon Jones won't give a shit since he's not going to be with the team next year. And it's going to Junior Motorsports, the team Ty Gibbs is going up against in its final four. But out of these four drivers, which of these four will win this shit show of a championship at Phoenix? I'll just say this though, Phoenix will definitely, the Xfinity will definitely be the race of the weekend for sure. Especially with a lot of the hype and attention going around this race. Will it live up to the hype or not? Let's find out. So in terms of who should win the championship, let's be honest. There is no way in hell Ty Gibbs is walking out champion. Not a chance in hell. Like Ty Gibbs dumping Brandon Jones at... Martinsville sealed his fate. Like, if Ty Gibbs walks out champion, then it proves that there is no God and that I, that we should all lose hope on humanity. There's no hope in humanity if Ty Gibbs wins the title. Like, there, like God help us all. Like, I think Brandon Jones is going to wreck him out. Like, I think this Saturday we're going to see the death of the chase grid. Because the one scenario we haven't had play out in the chase... Is a driver not competing for the title intentionally taking out somebody that is? And I think we see that with Brandon Jones. I think Brandon Jones will get his payback at Ty Gibbs. Like, why the fuck should Brandon Jones give a shit about Junior J JGR when he's going to Junior Motorsports next year to drive the nine car? I mean, what? I mean, what's Joe Gibbs Racing gonna do if Brandon Jones wrecks Ty Gibbs? to fire him they already have like brandon jones ain't gonna be with the team after saturday so i think brandon jones should just say fucking and give joe gibbs the middle finger before he leaves i to say this if ty if brandon jones does indeed dump ty gibbs then it would all but prove that this format is an illegitimate way to crown a champion and that this whole thing is a lot bigger than in a fucking Xfinity championship. Even if the best driver all season, Noah Gregson, wins the championship, the damage will already be done. Or even if Chase Elliott or Ross Chastain win the Cup Series title Sunday, it would prove that the damage is already done. But yeah, there is no chance that Ty Gibbs will win this championship. Not only will Ty Gibbs not win the championship, Ty Gibbs will not even finish the goddamn race. So yeah, I think it's between the three junior motorsports cars, uh, Barry, Allgaier, and Gregson. Like, out of those three, I'd be okay with either of them winning the championship. Like, this is one of those rare times where I'd be okay with the best driver all season not winning the title since the championship would be with junior motorsports in this situation. Like, I know a lot of people are going to are gonna try and say that Allgaier is more worthy of the title than Gregson because Allgaier has gone through the most pain in his career. And he's gotten screwed over a few times. And that all guyers done his due time. He's done his service. He's paid his dues. And that he that championship has been the one thing eluding him in Xfinity. And that it's his time. But the racing gods really don't give a shit about all that. And honestly. And honestly if Noah Gregson doesn't walk out champion. It would be fucking criminal. So with all that said. And keep this in mind. The last time we had three junior motorsports cars in the Final Four, it was 2017. And in 2017, it was a nine car that ended up winning the championship in William Byron. And I think at Phoenix, I think history will repeat itself. So with all that said, I have Noah Gregson winning the 2022 Xfinity Series Championship and capping off a monster career season. Before DNF, before what's coming up at Petty GMS. And we will get to that in a little bit. But now, it's time to look at the Cup Series Final Four individually. So it's time to look at our Final Four for, for the Cup Series. Starting off, hailing from Penske Racing. Hailing out of Middletown, Connecticut. Don't 
Oh, shocker. Joey Logano making the Final Four again on an even number of year. Who could have seen this coming? To be honest, I think anybody that has sensed this pattern knew Logano would be here. Like, he's literally made the Final Four every single even number of year under this format. Yeah, all five years under this format and even number of year, Logano has made it all five times. So with this power, it means that next year, Wagato will be irrelevant and not make the Final Four, since next year is an odd number year. So we'll probably expect Wagano to be back here in 2024. But yeah, Wagano's had a pretty underrated season. Like, he has three wins, but he's been quietly consistent with his, with his season. Like, he's always been very consistent, at least a top five, top six driver all season. But, of course, all, we all know Logano, he always turns it up and gets hot at the right time in the chase. Especially on even number of years and it happened again. And, of course, we all know Logano, he has his three wins. One of them came at Gateway, which is a track of similar configuration. Has a lot of similarities to, um, yeah, a lot of similarities to Phoenix. And Logano has had a lot of good speed this year. Can Wagano muster to a championship? Like, Wagano's been in the Final Four numerous times. Of course, winning the championship in 2018 when he won the damn war over Martin Truex Jr. And he has experience winning at Phoenix in the chase. Like, he has two wins at Phoenix, but only one of them came in the chase. And his one win at Phoenix in the chase, it came in 2016. Granted, most of that was Alex Bowman and Kyle Busch making contact with each other and taking Kenseth out which opened the door for Logano to steal the win. But hey, you gotta take advantage of opportunities when they present itself. So yeah, Logano, he has a chance now to win a second career championship. And of course, the last time Logano was here, it was in 2020. And he had a really good chance to win the championship. Until he got passed by Chase Elliott with 43 to go. But can Logano finally win that second title in his career? Or does he fall short at Phoenix once again? You'll have, the competition won't be that easy. But if anyone can pull a championship out of their ass again, 100% Logano could be the man to pull it out and win the damn war. I mean, I mean, there's, I mean, it's really tough to say who's been the best driver all year, especially with the amount of parity we've had this year. But could Wagano do it here? We'll have to see. But there's still three other drivers we have to go over. Because for our next driver, hailing out of Joe Gibbs Racing from Norman, Oklahoma. Wait a second, Christopher Bell? Now, I did have Christopher Bell as a potential dark horse for the championship, but I didn't think he'd actually make the final four. Especially with how off Joe Gibbs Racing has been this year. But, damn, that is kind of surprising. But yeah, I've been telling a lot of people all year that Christopher Bell has been the best driver at Joe Gibbs Racing this year. That he was the number one driver and not Denny Hamlin. And yeah, this, this year has proved that it is now Christopher Bell's time. We might have been entering the Christopher Bell era at Joe Gibbs Racing. As it seems like with Christopher Bell this year, it seems like it wasn't the car that was the problem this whole time, the last a couple years ago. And that the problem was truly Eric Jones. Time will tell there. But Christopher Bell had a career, has had a career season, has had his breakout year with Joe Gibbs Racing, getting three wins. Of course, of his, of course winning Martinsville last week in a must-win scenario to get in here and even giving Joe Gibbs Racing their 200 Cup Series win in the process. Holy shit, Joe Gibbs, it took you long enough to get 200 Cup wins? What took you so long? But welcome to the club. And yeah, with that, Joe Gibbs Racing became the third team in NASCAR history to win at least 200 Cup races. Of course, Christopher Bell has a lot of experience in these type of situations on this track. Of course, Christopher Bell he won at New Hampshire earlier this year, a track that has a lot of similarities to Phoenix. And he also ran well at Richmond in the fall, in the summertime, where he would end up finishing second to Harvick in, at Richmond. But he would have won that race if, he, if, if Bell had one more lab to, pat, to catch Harvick. 
just ran out of time there when he was running Harvick down. And of course, Rich, why do I mention Richmond? Because Richmond also has a lot of similarities to Phoenix. Usually if you run well at tracks like Gateway, New Hampshire, or even uh, Richmond, you usually tend to do well at Phoenix. With those three track, with those four tracks sharing a lot of similarities with each other. And of course, Chris Rebell has a lot of experience in the Final Four and other series. As Bell becomes the first driver in Cup Series history in NASCAR history to make the Final Four in all three series. Of course, he made the Final Four in Trucks in 2017 and won the championship. And he's made the Final Four in Xfinity twice. Both times he had very tough at he had very good seasons, but both times he fell just short of the championship. He also won he also won the Xfinity race here at Phoenix in 2018 to make it to the Final Four in Xfinity. So he has experience getting the job done at Phoenix. But of course, this is his first Cup Series Final Four and just his third full-time season. Just think this here. This is only his third full-time season in the Cup Series. And he's this good now. Like, the talent is definitely there. And Bell is definitely going to be a future star and future champion in this sport. Will this be his time at Phoenix Sunday? Or will this just be a learning experience to get back here? Because usually the saying has been that you usually have to lose a championship first in order to win it. But it is not impossible to win the Cup Series championship on the first try. And Bell's only 27, so he's only going to get better as the years go on. But yeah, Christopher Bell definitely going to be a name to watch out for in the Cup Series. Can Bell get it done at Phoenix? Like, you look at Bell's season this year, it 100% has a lot of similarities to Chase Elliott's championship season in 2020. Because Chris, cause, cause both races that Christopher Bell won in the chase this year, were the same races that Chase Elliott won in the chase in 2020, the Roval and Martinsville. At Martinsville, Chase was in a must-win scenario at in 2020 at that race, and he won it. And Christopher Bell, he was in the same scenario at Martinsville in a must-win, and he got the job done and came in clutch. Can Bell cap off a career year and win his first championship at Martins at, at Phoenix? If not, this won't be his only opportunity. He'll be back here 100. But the cup, but there's still a lot of tough competition still here. Because for our next driver in the final four, we have hailing out of Henrik Motorsports from Dawsonville, Georgia. So Chase Elliott is back in the final four to have a chance at the championship. And you look at Chase Elliott's season this year. He has established himself with a new identity. For a number of years, we've always looked at Chase Elliott as the Cup Series road course reigner. This year is a different story because all five of his wins have come have come on ovals and not road courses. Hell, Chase Elliott didn't even win a single road course race this year. Like all five of Chase's wins have come on five different ovals, like winning at tracks like Dover. Nashville, Atlanta, also winning Pocono, but that Pocono win has an asterisk because he mainly got it off of Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin being disqualified over a piece of tape on the front of the car, and then winning the Chase race at Talladega. But you look at Chase Elliott this year, I'm not, like Chase Elliott just hasn't had a lot of speed in the chase. Like he had a lot of speed in the regular season, but in the chase, he has been the equivalent of inconsistent. Like, he's been the equivalent of boom or bust this year in the chase. But he was able to do able to do just enough to make it here. And, of course, Chase Elliott, he always runs well at Phoenix. Phoenix being his, one of his best tracks. And, of course, Chase having a lot of experience at Phoenix. Because consider this. Um, Chase Elliott, his only win at Phoenix came in 2020 when he won the championship. And he's run well on these kind of tracks all year because New Hampshire, he finished second to Christopher Bell. And he also ran well at Richmond this year. Well, Gateway, he was running oh well enough until he got in a pissing match with Ross Chastain. But despite that, we all know Chase Elliott, he's going to be a contender this Sunday at Phoenix. Especially with Phoenix being one of his best tracks. 
because I've always told everybody, if you put Chase Elliott and Phoenix with a shot at the championship, the title is right there for the taking. Of course, the side reading of Tomahawk Chop will be this nine team's battle cry. Of course, for this nine team, the pieces are already there for this team. As, uh, as of course, the team is still the same from 2020. Alan Gustafson still calling the shots. Can Chase Elliott win the championship? Or will this race be equivalent of what his season in the chase has been this year? Just a boom or bust. It all depends on what he is at Phoenix because it because like I've said before, it doesn't matter what you do to nine previous races in the chase. If you can make it to the final four, anything's possible. And oddly enough in this situation, Chase Elliott's not even part of the driver's championship this year. He's only part of the driver's championship this year because the nine team's not part of the owner's championship. As Kyle Larson is taking his place in the owner's championship. Because of, yeah, the whole Kurt Busch and concussion thing fucking everything up. But, yeah. It, but, yeah. But the one name of the game we've had this season is complete chaos. And it seems like this nine team only performs well when there's no chaos. When there's chaos, this team completely crumbles and falls apart like a graham cracker. And you can talk about NASCAR's boner for entertainment all you want. Great drivers can overcome that adversity. Chase Elliott has to show he can overcome that adversity. But before Chase Elliott can have a shot at his second title in three years to complete the HMS 3 Pete, there's still one last driver we have to go over. Because for our final driver, hailing out of Acon, Florida for track house racing. Oh, what a shocker. The final driver in the final four is Rush Chastain? Wait, Chastain didn't get screwed over by the field in the chase? Wow, that is a bit of a shock. See, so yeah, Ross Chastain, of course, he mainly got in here with that crazy move at Martinsville where he rode the wall at a video game move. The first time in NASCAR history that a video game move actually pulled off. So yeah, Ross Chastain has completed one a, a great upset season. That's uh, a great underdog story. Because you look at Ross Chastain's season at the start of the year, his odds of winning the championship at the start of the year was 150 to 1. Like, if you told me at the start of the year that Ross Chastain would be in the Final Four this year and a contender for the championship, I would have laughed you out of billion and asked what kind of drugs you were on. But here we are. But to understand Ross Chastain's story, we have to go all the way back to when he got his first real opportunity with a real team. All the way back in 2018 in Xfinity. Of course, the early parts of Chastain's career, he was stuck in a bunch of shitmobile rides with Premium Motorsports and JD Motorsports and Xfinity. His driving style rubbed a lot of people in Xfinity and cut the wrong way, but Chastain never gave a damn. A lot of this came ahead when he drive, to drive the 42 for Ganassi and Xfinity at Darlington, where he was contending for the lead until he had a run in with Kevin Harvick. And then Harvick got pissed, saying that Chastain would never get another top opportunity in NASCAR ever again. Well, for Harvick's comments to say those comments didn't age well would be a massive understatement. And of course, in 2019, Chastain was going to have a job opportunity with Chip Ganassi full-time Xfinity until the FBI raided DC Solar and that plan completely went out the window. So then Chastain had to restart from scratch, but he would get a chance in 2019 with, with, in trucks with Nice Motorsports where he would have a breakout season and prove that there is some potential and talent with him there, even making the Final Four in, in trucks with Nice Motorsports. But he would fall short of the championship and to a guy in Matt Crafton that didn't win a single fucking race on oh, that season was pretty irrelevant all year. As yeah, that 2019 season produced the first winless champion in truck series history. Under a chase format that was designed to put a bigger emphasis on winning over everything else. Of course, Chastain would then go on and would get another opportunity with another top decent Xfinity team in colleague racing. Sally Chastain was very consistent in that car, but just could not muster a win into it. 
and just fell short of the Final Four. And then in 2021, he would get an opportunity at Chip Ganassi Racing when the 42 car opened up after Kyle Larson said a gamer word. And then, Lars, and then after Larson's road to redemption and Larson going to the 5 car at Hendrick Motorsports, Chastain would get his opportunity in the 40 in Ch his old ride in the 42. And last year, we'll just say Chastain had his growing pains as that was his first time, his first season in an actually decent ride in, uh, in NAS in the Cup Series. But he did show some good runs that showed some flashes of potential to maybe be something in the Cup Series. And then we get to this season, his first year with Trackhouse Racing and Trackhouse Racing's second season. As, yeah, Trackhouse decided to go get their guy. Of course, when Trackhouse chose to bring Ross Chastain in over Kurt Busch, a lot of people criticized the move, saying, why would they take, it, take an unproven commodity in Ross Chastain instead of a proven one in Kurt Busch? But little did everyone know that Justin Marks takes bringing in Ross Chastain would be one of the greatest tires this team has had so far in their short history. As Chastain has had a career resurgence here. As he was able to get his first of two wins this year at Coda and Talladega. And of course Chastain get a bit of a reputation for running people over in the Cup Series. But Chastain never just gave a damn. As Chastain has scratched and clawed for everything in his career. And now it has culminated to this moment at Phoenix. Like you look at Chastain's story, it is very similar to another famous NASCAR Hall of Famer that has had this kind of history. It's a lot of comparables to Dale Earnhardt's career because Dale Earnhardt he had the scratch and claw for everything in his career. And his story was relatable to at least the majority of the fan base that have had the scratch and claw for every paycheck in the sport. And Dale Earnhardt's driving style is the driving style that any other person has playing a NASCAR video game. And you look at Ross Chastain's story coming up, it's literally nearly an exact replica of Dale Earnhardt's. Like Chastain has had the scratch and claw for everything in his career, his story is relatable to, to, every, to every fan in the, and every person in America that's had the scratch and claw for every paycheck. And his driving style looks like the kind of style everyone has when playing a NAS playing a NASCAR video game. Like, like a lot of people are saying that Chastain is the second coming to Dale Earnhardt. They might actually be onto something. Like a lot of people have said there may never be another Dale Earnhardt in this sport. But if there's one exception to that, I think Ross Chastain would have to be that exception. So of course, you look at it, it's Trackhouse's second season and they have a chance to win their first title. And regardless of what happens, this is a successful season for Trackhouse Racing. Because think of it, this team is this good now. Imagine what this team could be three to five years from now. Once they establish themselves and get all the right pieces in place to be a competitive team. Like in the terms of what team would be better Trackhouse for 2311. So far that edge is 100% going to Trackhouse. But 2311 will probably change that next year with Tyler Reddick. But can Ross Chastain pull off the underdog story and scratch his claw his way to a Cup Series title? Or does he fall short once again and does his reputation cost him a title? His reputation hasn't yet cost him a title, hasn't cost him in the chase, unless everyone's waiting till Phoenix when it truly mattered the most. We'll have to see. But yeah, anyway, our, four, our final four are, not, are now set. Logano looking for a second title. Chris Revelle looking to cap off a breakout season with his first championship. Chase Elliott looking to win his second title in three years. And Ross Chastain looking to pull off the underdog story and win his first Cup Series. It scratches Claw's way to his first Cup Series title. Four great storylines. A lot of great outcomes for the championship. But in the end, only one can win the duel in the Arizona desert. Let's still roll. So yeah, there's been a lot of parity this season. And really, you look at the season, there really wasn't a clear-cut dominant driver this year. Like, there were multiple drivers you could have made a case for for the championship. Like, really, this year, the best driver all year, if you ask me who the best driver was all season, it would be a toss-up between Chase Elliott and Ross Chastain. I think both of them are equal. 
I think Chase Elliott's had more speed than Chastain, but Chastain has been more consistent than Chase. Especially in the chase. But as we've seen here, there's been a lot of parity, and the name of the game this season has been complete chaos. We've seen a lot of chaos throughout this season. And we've seen the nine team has struggled in chaos. Like Chris Bell, yes, he does have experience on his side with Adam Stevens, as Adam Stevens has been in the Final Four before with Kyle Busch, when he was the crew chief for Kyle Busch in it, in the 18 car. So Bell will have experience there. But I feel like Bell, I feel like this would, I feel like it's too much for Bell too soon. I think Bell falls short. But I do think Bell's future is bright and that a championship will come. I think this will be a learning experience for Bell. Regardless of what happens, I think Bell will be back here in the future. I think with Gon I think with Gon despite a lot of the good success he's had, I just don't know if he can get it done at Phoenix when it matters the most. I think it's really between Elliott and Chastain and, the, and if there's going to be chaos at the finish of Phoenix or not. So yeah, here's how I think Phoenix will go down. I think Chase Elliott will dominate the race and he'll have the lead late. And then a late race caution will come out. And then Alan Gustafson will learn nothing from his previous strap race strategy fuck-ups and he'll make a bad strategy call. And I think in the end, it opens the door to the one driver that has thrived in chaos. But I should mention here, with the amount of parity we've had this season with this new car, if there was a season where the champion doesn't win the finale this year, it would have to be this season. Especially with Kyle Larson in the Final Four for the Owners Championship. Because, oh yeah, I should mention, there's also a scenario where Larson and Chase Elliott could finish 1-2, and both of them could walk out champion. Yeah, that kind of crazy with how much parity we've had this year where we could potentially crown two champions in one weekend. And usually we don't talk about the Owners title in the Cup Series because usually the team that wins the Drivers title usually wins the Owners title. Like, man, we only talk about the Owners title for Xfinity and Trucks with all the Cup leeches. But I guess there's an exception this year. But in the end, I'm going with the one driver that's thrived in chaos this year. So with all that said, I am going for it. I think the I think we're gonna have the underdog champion this year. I think Ross Chastain is gonna come out of nowhere through all the chaos, and Chastain will power his way and scratch and claw his way to his first Cup Series title. Because chaos. And Chastain has been the master of chaos this year. I think Chastain will officially cap off an underdog season. And wins his first Cup Series title. But yeah. But yeah, that's the Cup Series Final Four this year. Will I get any of these right this weekend? We'll have to tune in to find out. But honestly, God help us all if Logano wins another championship. But yeah, there's been a lot. Of, this season's been very fucking crazy. I think we all need a break from NASCAR after this weekend. Just, yeah, we need a break. Because this season has pretty much taken... I think I've been the most worn, worn out this year from this season. But yeah, I'm taking Chastain as my pick for the Cup Series title this year. I just think Chase has always been too inconsistent. I think Chastain thrives better in the late race chaos. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. And uh, I'll see you all over make next, Sam. Wait a minute. Why do I feel the earth shaking underneath my feet? Oh my fucking god.